In today's video, I want to talk about one of my all time favorite pieces of software, something that I've been using nearly every day for the last 10 years, Tmux. The name Tmux means terminal multiplexer, which is really just a fancy name for a piece of software that lets you have multiple virtual terminals running in one single terminal window. Management of these virtual terminals for things like window layout and session management is driven using keyboard shortcuts, which I find to be super productive especially when working on smaller form factor machines where getting a nice window layout with the mouse or even with touch gestures can be quite fiddly. If you work in the terminal a lot and you're not already using Tmux, you will definitely want to invest the time to learn because it's such a huge boost to productivity. You can learn the basics of Tmux in under 20 minutes and we'll run through those basics in this video. You will get benefit almost immediately and with a few days of practice, you'll find that Tmux becomes second nature. I've split this video into two main sections, a tutorial on how Tmux works and a deep dive into the customization options that I use for my setup and I've put timestamps for all the different sections in the description below. But because Tmux is such an unusual piece of software, I want to start with a very brief tour of what it is and what you can do with it, just so you can figure out if this video is for you. I'm ringing on my iPad here, connected to my Linux workstation, and I'm showing my fully customized Tmux. And I'll show in the video how to get to this level of customization. So I'll just run a quick command, uh, htop in this case, and now the whole terminal window is taken up running htop. With Tmux though, I can create another virtual window, and I'll show all the keyboard shortcuts throughout the video. So now we've got another window, and the status bar at the bottom, shows that we've got window zero, htop, and window one, ring zshell. And I can switch backwards and forwards between these windows as much as I want, and I can even bring up a little window tree to navigate when I've got a lot more windows open. It can be quite nice to split one window into multiple regions, which Tmux supports, so I can do a vertical split here. So now I've got two terminals on one, on win one window, and I can even split one of these vertical splits horizontally as well to create another little terminal window. And I use this quite a lot during my development work. So I might have my editor open on one side and then tests running on the other side. And it's quite nice to just be able to see everything on one screen. You can switch between these splits, which are called panes in Tmux terminology using the keyboard or when properly configured using mouse as well. Since I'm connected over SSH, it's entirely likely that I'll want to disconnect at some point, but I don't want to lose my work. I can detach from this session, completely disconnect, and then reconnect over SSH and bring back my session as it was before. Can even reattach from a different machine. So I have my MacBook here and I'll SSH into my Linux machine, attach and pick up from where I left off. I can go one step further though and attach from both machines at the same time. This is nice for two reasons. One, you can use this to collaborate with somebody else when working. Two, you can have Tmux running on your desktop machine say, and then seamlessly pick up the same session from your laptop or tablet when you're away from your desk. Tmux can do a lot more, but I think this covers the highlights and hopefully will give you enough insight to see why I use Tmux so much. Let's get started with some basics, installing Tmux, starting it, and seeing how its keyboard shortcuts work. Installing Tmux is quite simple. On Linux, you'll almost certainly find it in your package manager. For example, on Raspberry Pi, you can run sudo apt to install Tmux. If you're using Windows with WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, then the exact same command will work for you. And on Mac, I recommend using Homebrew, and I have done a full video on Homebrew, which is linked above. And when you've got Homebrew installed, it's enough to just run brew install Tmux. Starting Tmux is super easy. You just run the Tmux command from your terminal of choice. You can SSH into a machine and start Tmux that way, or you can run it directly on the machine that you're at. So I'm here in a Blink Shell on my iPad, and I've connected to a Raspberry Pi over SSH. So I'll just run Tmux to get started. And we can see that at the bottom, we have this little bar showing that we're inside a Tmux session. On Mac, Linux, and Windows, you can start Tmux directly on the machine. So here I'm using the Kitty terminal emulator on Mac to run Tmux directly on my MacBook. My typical setup is to run Tmux in every terminal that I intend to keep open for longer than a few minutes. If I'm connecting to a machine over SSH, then I always use Tmux. And likewise, if I'm running a coding project on my work MacBook, then I will always have a Tmux session open for that project. The keyboard shortcuts in Tmux are pretty intuitive, but they are corded shortcuts, and these are not super common, so I wanted to provide a full explanation. In a standard keyboard shortcut, you might hold a modifier key, say Command, and then follow it with another key, say C, so Command C for copy on a Mac. With corded shortcuts, you'll press one key or modifier key combo, followed by another key or modifier key combo, forming a sort of chord. Applications that use this style of shortcut often refer to the first part of the chord as the prefix. In Tmux, the default prefix is Control B, so we create a new window by pressing Control B and then pressing C for create. And you can see from the bar at the bottom now, we have two windows, zero and one. 
So we can create windows using the prefix followed by C and we can switch between these windows using the prefix followed by the index number. So I'm currently on window one and it has an asterisk next to it to show that that's the current window. And I might just put some text in here. Techcraft like that. And now if I switch to window zero, prefix zero, that's control B and then zero to go to window zero, control B one to go to window one. I find myself toggling backwards and forwards between two particular windows quite a lot. So rather than having to remember the prefixes and using the prefix shortcuts, I can just use prefix L to toggle backwards and forwards. So prefix L, prefix L, prefix L, toggling me backwards and forwards between those two windows. For longer sessions, it's nice to be able to give the windows fixed names rather than just the names they are automatically assigned. And we can do this with prefix followed by comma. And I'm gonna change this one to say editor. And then I'm gonna switch maybe to the other window and I'll change this to uh, tests like that. So now I've got editor and tests and I can still switch backwards and forwards between them. Create switch by index and toggle window cover off about 80% of the window management use cases I have in a normal team up session. But there are a few other useful shortcuts that are useful to have in the back of your mind. Prefix followed by W brings up the window tree and you can move up and down in the window tree using the arrow keys and then press enter to bring the window that you want. If you watch my previous video on SSH, you might recall that control P and control N can be used in place of the up and down arrows for previous and next line. These shortcuts work in the window tree as well. So here I'm pressing control N to go to the next line, control P, control P to go to the previous line. If you have a lot of windows open, it can be useful to filter that window tree and prefix F gives us find windows. So let's just type in Eddie like that for editor. And we've filtered based on that little bit of text we entered and we can go straight to the editor window. To kill one of these windows, I can either type in exit to get rid of this window and that one's gone, or I can press prefix and then ampersand and I get prompted, do I want to kill that window or not? I'm gonna leave this one open for now. Within each window, we can further split the screen into panes with each pane being its own virtual terminal. Splits are either vertical or horizontal. We create a vertical split with prefix percent and a horizontal pre uh, split with prefix double quote. Teamworks provides a bunch of built-in pane layouts and we can toggle between them by using prefix and spacebar. We can switch between panes using prefix followed by the arrow keys and you'll switch to the next pane in that direction. Let me show you what I mean. So if we put some text in here, echo hello. So we're in this bottom pane. If I do prefix and up, I've gone to this one here. And if I do prefix and left arrow, I've gone to this one here. And I can do prefix and right to go back. So moving around with the arrow keys. You can also just cycle between the panes with prefix and O like this and see where the cursor is going. And I find the cycling to be particularly useful, especially if you've only got two panes open because you can just cycle back and forth between the two panes. You can also switch to panes by index number. I don't find this super useful, but I will show you just for completeness. Prefix Q will show you the, the numbers. It doesn't stay around for very long. And then prefix Q and the number will take you to that pane. A particularly useful for panes is zoom. This makes a pane full screen. I'll show you what I mean. So we maybe we open up a text editor in this little pane in the top corner. That's not a lot of screen real estate. So prefix and Z makes that full screen. And then when we're finished, prefix and Z puts it back to the small size again. To close just a pane, you do prefix and X to kill the pane. And remember that prefix ampersand closes the whole window. So we'll close all panes at once. I find I usually spend a few minutes at the start of a session setting up the panes. And then mostly I'm just cycling backwards and forwards between the panes with the cycle shortcut. So much so in fact that I've actually remapped that to be a bit more convenient. And I'll show you that later on in the video. So now you're probably wondering, how do I resize these panes? How do I get the layout that I want? And you can resize using the keyboards. The shortcuts are a little bit unwieldy, so let me just talk you through it. So here I am, I've got two panes and I want to resize the top pane to be a little bit bigger. So I can press the prefix and then press control down. Prefix, control down. So that's control B, control down. You don't have to take your finger off the control key if you're very, very quick. So I can press control B up, control B up, control B up. And I'm not taking my finger off the control key. If you're trying this on a Mac, it probably won't work. And the reason is that Mac itself takes over the control arrow key shortcuts for spaces. You could turn off the spaces shortcuts, but honestly, I find these Tmux window resizing shortcuts to be a bit unwieldy. And on the Mac, at least, it's easier to use the mouse to resize the windows. I'll show you how to enable that feature very shortly. But before we do that, let's just take a look at session management. If you're running Tmux over SSH, you'll find the session management features particularly interesting because this allows you to disconnect from the host, but leave your session running. So the set of windows that you see here is referred to as a session and I can exit Tmux, but leave this session running by pressing prefix and D for detach. 
I'm now out of Tmux. And if I run the Tmux command again, when we re-enter Tmux, we'll see that we don't get our session back. We get a brand new session. And the reason for this is every time you run the Tmux command, you get a brand new session by default, unless you say you specifically want to attach to an existing session. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to say, this is my new session. So we can tell this one apart later on. And we're going to detach with prefix D. And we'll run Tmux attach this time to tell Tmux we want to attach the existing session. And it's attached us to the last session. If you run Tmux attach without any other information, it will attach to the, the most recently used session. If we want to attach the session we created right at the start of the video, we have to say exactly which session we want. And we'll do that. And to do that, we're going to come out of this session. So prefix D for detach. We'll run Tmux ls here. And we can see we've got two sessions running, session zero and session three. And I want to go to session zero, which is the session we created right at the start of the video. So I can do tmux a, you can use a as a shortcut for attach, then dash t, which is the target, the target session, and I want zero. So attach to session zero. And we're back in that session we had right at the start of the video. I usually have two long live sessions running on my dev workstation. I have one for my Techcraft work and then one for my day job work. And it can be quite nice to give them names as opposed to have to remember whichever number was assigned to them when they were started. So to do this, we're gonna use the tmux rename session command. So rename session. And I don't remember the argument, so I'll just press enter and it will tell me what it is that I need to uh, type in. So tmux rename session. And I can omit, the square brackets means that I can, I can omit this and it will use the current session that I'm inside. So I'm already running in tmux session zero. I'm just gonna call this one TC. And you can see at the bottom corner here, the little session indicator has changed from zero to TC. So now this session is called TC. And if I detach from this session, I can now tmux a dash t TC using the session name rather than the index to attach back in. So that covers off the bulk of the session window and pane features that I use daily in Tmux. There are a few more things that I use very, very rarely that are not really worth covering in an introductory video. Let's now turn our attention to how we customize Tmux to get the most out of it. So Tmux is configured using its configuration file, the default location for which is .tmux.conf in your home directory. The first change I like to make is to remap the prefix from control B to control T. On my keyboard layout, which is Dvorak, T is on the home row, placing the prefix in a very natural location. As I discussed in my SSH video, I also like to remap caps lock to be control. So this places the prefix in a very accessible location. Since I don't have a config file yet, I'm just going to create one from nothing. So using Vim. So the first thing to do is to unbind the current prefix. So unbind C dash B, unbind the control B shortcut. And then the next thing to do is to set a global shortcut. So uh, set dash G prefix is control T. So write those changes, but they don't take effect immediately. We need to tell tmux to reload its config file. So I'm going to open up another tab and do tmux source dash file and then the path to the config file. And now I can use control T as my prefix. Having to run source file every time you make a config change is quite annoying. So I like to create a dedicated keyboard shortcut that will reload the config file and I can then do it whenever I want. So to do that, we'll come back to the config file and we'll add unbind R. So I want to just make sure there's nothing already bound to the R shortcut. And then we're going to bind R to the source dash file .tmux.conf command. And now if we run prefix followed by R, we'll get the config reloaded, but it won't yet take effect. We need to once more run source file. And now I'm able to run prefix R to reload the source file. I mentioned earlier on that one of the shortcuts I like to use a lot is the toggle pane shortcut. This is bound to prefix O by default. I like to add another binding for that so I can just press control T twice to switch between panes. Let me show you how that works. So come back to the config file. Now the first thing I'm going to do is unbind control T uh, as a shortcut. We can use the caret for control here. And now we'll bind control T to this little command, which is select dash pane dash T for target. And then this little snippet, which is basically cycle, it's go to the next pane in the cycle. I'm gonna write that to disk, prefix R to reload the config. And then if I come to this pane here, this window here, I've got two panes open and I can just use control T twice to toggle between them. I also like to create more intuitive shortcuts for splitting the window into panes. I want to assign prefix H for a horizontal split and prefix V for a vertical split. To do that, we can do bind H into uh, into split window dash V. And I know that doesn't necessarily make any sense, but you'll see that that does work. Split window dash H, write that to the disk and then prefix R to reload. And if we come to say a new window now, I can do prefix V for a vertical split split and prefix H for an horizontal split. A particularly important option is enabling mouse support in particular for scrolling and also for selecting windows and panes. 
Mouse scroll works in an odd way by default in Tmux. If I try to scroll with my touchpad, I'm going to scroll through the command history, not back through the actual screen itself. And I'll show you, if I just put the content of a large file to the screen here, I can't scroll it. I'm trying to scroll and I can't scroll it with the mouse. Instead, I'm getting the command history scrolling. We can fix that. So back in the config, let's come down here. We're going to do set dash G mouse on. Save the file prefix R for reload and now if I come back here and use the mouse I'm scrolling with the scroll mode instead and if I come to my second window here I can actually now use the mouse to select the different panes you're not just limited to pane selection though you can also select the windows as well using the mouse this is quite a nice little addition I think one thing you can't do inside blink on the iPad is use the mouse to resize the the panes here this does work on the Mac and on Linux I'm not quite sure why it doesn't work on the iPad and I've Messed around with it for a long time, not going to work just yet. So now let's turn our attention to customizing the look and feel of TMOX, getting a nicer status bar, just generally making it feel a little bit nicer. For years, I did this by hand and it's quite an onerous process. These days though, I've switched to using TPM, the TMOX plugin manager, and using one of the many great look and feel plugins that come with that. Installing TPM is really easy. Visit the TPM GitHub page and I'll put the link to this in the description below. You want this installation command here. We're just gonna copy it with that little icon. Come back to TMOX. And we're just going to paste that command in and we need to just remove this uh, dollar sign at the start and i use control a to go to the start of the line there in case you were wondering and press enter and it will complain that git's not installed if you've like me this is a brand new setup raspberry pi or maybe you don't have git installed you can usually install it with your package manager apt on uh, the raspberry pi and brew on mac once git is installed we can run the tpm installation command again so that's tpm installed now and we now need to add a few lines of config to our config file these lines have to go at the bottom of the config file so i'll come right to the bottom here and paste them in and i've just got three lines here the two plugins i want to install initially and then the run command to trigger tpm i'm installing the tpm plugin itself and the tmux sensible plugin this is just a bunch of standard defaults that you'll want to apply to all your hosts I highly recommend it. So with the config in place, we can press prefix R to reload the config file, and then we can press prefix capital I, so shift I to install the plugins. It takes a few moments and then TPM will tell you that the environment has been reloaded. We can press escape to continue and nothing will happen because the two plugins we've selected so far don't actually have any visible change to the Tmux environment. For that, we need to install a look and feel plugin. Wherever possible, I like to use the Dracula theme for all of my software, and there is a great Dracula plugin for TPM, and we're going to install that right now. So back in the config file, I'm going to add a new line here. So it's it's at the bottom of the plugin list, but it's before the run command. And it's the same kind of format, dash G, at plugin, and it's called uh, Dracula slash Tmux. And I'm going to write that to file, prefix R to reload the file, prefix capital I to install the new plugin, and immediately you can see that it now looks like I've got a nice Dracula theme here, and I'm just gonna press escape. So the Dracula plugin itself has a bunch of customization options that I like to apply, and I'll talk you through my favorite ones right now. So first up, I like to make the, the status bar look a little less boxy using the power line style. So we do uh, set G Dracula dash show power line true. We can write that and then reload the config file. And you'll see now I've got these nice little uh, arrows making the thing a little bit less boxy. You will need a font that supports the power line symbols for this to work properly. All of the fonts that come with Blink, I think, seem to support this. And I will put a link in the description to fonts that work on Mac and Linux. Next up, I'd like to replace the little smiley face in the bottom here with the session name. Set-G, Dracula, show left icon session. And there we go. There's the session name. So now let's turn our attention to this right side of the bar with all these little status icons. We've got you know, what's the power status it's on AC. I'm connected to Ethernet. This is my location with the weather. I like to customize this quite a bit. So the first thing to customize is to choose the list of things that are displayed. So we use uh, set dusty Dracula plugins. And I'm just going to go with CPU usage and RAM usage. You'll find the full list of possible plugins on the website. The reason why I like to choose just CPU usage and RAM usage is that on a small screen like this, it doesn't take up too much space. When you have all the plugins enabled, you have no space left for your windows. Um, so I much prefer having a setup like this. If you're working on a larger screen, you might like to install some of the other plugins like the battery plugin or the weather plugin or the Git plugin. But on a smaller screen, I like to keep it quite compact with just CPU and RAM. So that's Tmux. It's great and I can't recommend it highly enough. I can only think of a handful of software packages that I've used as consistently and as long as Tmux pretty much daily now for about 10 years. 
It does take a while to learn, but once you get the hang of it, that time investment really pays dividends. And for a piece of software you're going to be using for many, many years, it's really worth taking the time. Hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.